Okay, and welcome back students who are taking financial accounting. Um, this here is the second uh, vi video in a, this series of videos for us uh, for 30. No, spit it out, okay, um, for the first chapter on business accounting and you. And in the last video, we ended up, as you can see, I still have the same thing on here, okay, but um, I, we ended up stopping here at you know, other videos that are on the student community. So let me erase a lot of this stuff here and I will continue on, okay? Now, um, students who are, you know, taking this, these videos are intended to match the textbook for financial accounting. And, uh, but when it comes to doing books, right, you have bookkeeping, and then you also have accounting. A business has its set of books, okay? And let me go to the next video. No, yeah, let me no, let me stay here. All right. I, I see something just popped into my head, so I was gonna uh, go in that direction, but I decided against it. All right. Um, and this is what's gonna happen. This is ad hoc. This is you know just brain dumping. So. You know, please bear with me because that's just the way it is. So you have, um, you know, you have a, a business's books, okay? And there's actually two set, two different people that work on the books. You have your bookkeeper, and you have your account, right? Now the book, you know, because they're working on the same set of books, they all have, every, both have to be able to speak the same language. The language of accounting okay and but the difference is is that a bookkeeper pretty much does data entry okay. now sure there you know the better of a bookkeeper that you are the less mistakes you're going to make and obviously you also want to be efficient and accurate um, because you know anytime you make a mistake it's you know you're doing the work twice okay but it's the accountant's job to make sure that the information is accurate it's the accountant's job to present the information analyze it and do whatever and advise and you know the owners uh, or whoever you know the managers in the business um, to provide that analysis and, and give advice okay so the bookkeepers do the data entry and the account takes that information and then works with it now when i had first gotten started i was pompous enough um, to think that i could do the work of an account right and a friend of mine who was an accountant said no 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 no. you know you, you don't know anything okay and until i went and got my degree in accounting now i'm you know i'm kind of like ashamed to say yeah i was that pompous right because even though I was an extremely good bookkeeper, I didn't have all the knowledge that was needed uh, to be an accountant. Okay. Uh, again, bookkeepers just do data entry, but because I had been able to do the data entry and actually create financial statements, I thought I knew it all, and that, that's you know that's kind of like where you know a, a very good bookkeeper should get to. But it's up to the accountant to take those financial statements and go on and go beyond there and actually they're the ones that have to kind of like determine the methods and concepts that are used in creating the statement to me as a bookkeeper you know I was just taking the information and creating the financial statements but I wasn't the one who was determining how that information was created in the first place so there is a very distinct difference between a bookkeeper and an accountant and you're starting out in you know, I mean, even though bookkeepers can watch this and you know learn something from it, okay, um, realize that you are just in financial accounting, okay, and the as far as a an account is concerned, when you've completed intermediate accounting, you know both one and two. Well, you can then even begin to think about cons uh, considering yourself to be an accountant um, because financial accounting is, you know, basically just a high level overview. OK, it doesn't get in depth uh, as an example, uh, um, earnings per share. OK, now I know that you've had earnings per share. It was covered in intro to business. 
if you had that subject. And you also had it in math for business and finance. All right. um, that concept was covered there, and it's going to be covered again in financial accounting. However, that earnings per share calculation is very simplistic. By the time you get through intermediate accounting, um, the, the textbook spends one whole chapter specifically on earnings per share, and that calculation when written across a blackboard is three blackboards long. Okay, So that's just a, an example of to give you an idea of you know what you're learning in accounting, in financial accounting. It is a high level uh, presentation, but you have to start somewhere. Okay, and it covers you know general concepts. But as you go through, if you're an accountant, you end up going through um, uh, deeper and deeper levels of that understand uh, of those concepts. Now, if you're not going to be an accountant, you might be at wondering. Well, why am I taking financial accounting if I'm going to be in marketing or I'm in business management, you know, this type of thing? Well, the, the reason why you end up taking financial accounting is because the financial statements are the report card for the business. Okay. Right. Everything that happens in a business is, is translated in, you know, it's quantified, it's translated into numbers, and those numbers are then presented. So, if you, as a quick example here, if you have, you know, the way I look at business is you have the owners, right? However, you know, whatever form that comes in and then you have the operations over here which is your business managers and you have your marketing over here which is your sales managers and then you have your accounting and finance over here okay which are your accountants. Now, when you think about it, sales and marketing, they create the sales. And once they create the sales, they pass that over to operations. And once they pass it over to operations, they have nothing else to do with it. So really, they don't have to talk that much to, you know, if you're sitting at a, a corporate table and you have your owner, you have a business manager, a sales marketer, and an accountant, the marketing person doesn't have to discuss the business manager with operations because why once the you know the business manager he's sitting there saying well you know did you uh, did you get an order for me to be able to do whatever I need to do and you know if I have if I'm making tables and I've gotten an order for 10 tables well my job as a business manager is to make sure that the tables are created I could care less what it takes to be, uh, uh, to get those sales and conversely the sales manager, you know, he's, you know, doing the billboard advertising and stuff like this and the television spots, radio, whatever, in order to create the sale. But once he gets the sale, he doesn't really care how the product is created because his job is, is to just, um, you know, bring the sales in. So these, uh, the business manager and the sales uh, manager, you know, operations and marketing, you know, they kind of like report directly to the owner, okay? They don't need to talk to each other, right? They don't need to spend time, you know, uh, doing that. However, the accountant, you know, he's getting that information and he creates the financial statements, okay? So whatever the sales manager does, it ends up on a financial statement. Whatever the business manager does, it ends up on the financial statement. And as I said, the financial statement is the report card of the business. Why? Because it shows whether you've made a profit or loss. Okay. Um, it you know it shows your cash position in the company. It shows your financial position in the company. So the accountant, you know, you know, not only does he have to talk to the owner because he's, you know, discussing everything about the business okay I mean he, he's the one creating those statements and stuff but the account also has to talk to the business manager and also has to talk to the sales manager in order to explain why things are what they are okay and, and an example of this is 
let's say um, you have a banquet facility, okay? And let's say it's going to be a 2,000 person function. Well, the business manager, the manager of the banquet facility has to determine how many tables they need to put in the facility, okay? And they can do that by saying, okay, here's a table, and each table can hold either, you know, it can hold 10 person, 10 people at the max, okay? Well, if they put 10 people on a table, that means they're going to need 200 tables, all right, in order to be able to uh, have that uh, function for 2,000 people. But they can also, the business manager can also decide to put eight people per table. Well, now they're going to need, let's see, that's 16. Um, they're going to need, uh, let's see, that's one. Uh, let's see here. 10 people per table, right? 10 into that's two, right? So eight into 2,000, so that's, oh, no, it's two. And 16. Um, they're going to need 250 tables. Okay. Now, here's the thing. If they have 250 tables and they're, they're uh, putting eight people to a table, that means the staffing that he needs has to go up, right? Because he's going to need more people. You know, the average person can handle three tables um, as a waiter. Okay. So obviously, you know, I'm going to need here, a pro you know, if I have 10 people per table, that means I'm going to need approximately 70 uh, waiters. Okay. Um, if I have uh, 250 tables, well, now obviously I'm going to need, um, you know, 80 or more ta uh, people. Now I'm just doing rough math here. But the point being is, is that I have to staff either 70 or 80, depending upon how many I, you know, how many people I want to put at a table. Now, obviously, my payroll will go up if I staff 80 people versus 70 people. And, of course, by having a higher payroll, that means I have a higher expense. So if this 2,000-person uh, function, you know, is worth $50,000 in revenue, okay, well, obviously, if I have to pay more in payroll, that means I have a greater expense, which means I have lower profit, okay? Now, the biz, you know, this is, you know, fine. The business manager, he doesn't really think, a lot of business managers don't really think about this. But when the owner is looking at his profit and loss statement, he's going to want an explanation as to why he's not making as much profit. A lot of other considerations can go into it, and that's getting into a whole other ball of wax. But the point being is, is that the owner is looking at the financial statements, and the business manager needs to know what's on the financial statements so that he can justify his position. He can, you know, uh, also manage the the business better because he's managing the numbers. You know, the same thing can be said for the sales manager. I mean, let's say last year the sales manager had, for this particular month, had $100,000 in sales. And this year he decides to have a buy one, get one sale. All right. And this year, for this month, he produces $200,000 in sales, right? Now, he may go to the owner and say, hey, look, you know, this buy one, get one idea was a great idea because I doubled my sales. And wow, that seems, you know, to be really important, okay? However, you know, from a financial uh, perspective, you know, yeah, it looks like he had a, you know, 100%, you know, increase in his sales, but what if his cost of goods sold is only 25%? Okay, even though he had a hundred thousand dollars more in sales, he ends up actually losing money. Okay, and that's all reflected, you know, on the financial statements. So the finance, you know, the sales and marketing people, you know, sales managers, they need to be able to understand what goes on on the financial statements also. Okay, remember this is business. Okay. And you, whether you're a business manager or you're a marketer, you need to understand the fundamentals of business, and that's why you're taking financial accounting, okay? You may not like it, and a lot of people don't, okay? But it, you know, it is the, you know, like I said, the, uh, 
The financial statements are the report card for the business. It is what you, you know, you as a manager are judged by. And that's why understanding financial accounting and managerial accounting is part of your curriculum, whether you're a sales manager or business uh, management manager. Um, you know, it's part of your curriculum because, you know, that is, you know, the bottom line um, as to what you're being judged by, you know, to, uh, you know, for your performance in the business. I mean, you can't, uh, you know, an owner can't sit there and go, okay, I'm taking a loss, I'm taking a loss, I'm taking a loss, and not start questioning why. He can sit there and he can say, well, how come I'm not, you know, I need more sales and, and I need better productivity. Well, what does that mean? It means absolutely nothing, okay? And that's why, you know, everything that happens in business is recorded and all of that data and information is analyzed and you as a business manager or a sales manager need to understand that because that's your report card. That's what you're being judged by and that's why you're taking financial accounting, all right? So with that said, um, you're, you know, I've just talked about bookkeeping and accounting and went off on this other tangent, but I found it was uh, important. And since I'm done with that and I'm at like 16 and a half minutes, I'm going to stop this video and pick up in the next uh, video with memorization and understanding. All right. See you then.